YouTube, it's Colin here and I've got some pedal modifications for you today. With me I have my trusty Crybaby Wah Wah pedal. I love this pedal and I use it quite a lot. But there are some problems with the Crybaby. Uh, the first one and the, and the one that people usually cite as a problem is that it's a tone sucker. When you leave the guitar plugged through the pedal into the amp, even when the pedal is turned off, the signal path is going through the circuitry inside the pedal. Now that means that the tone is affected and people say it's quite significant. I don't know, I'm not sure, but today we're going to find out. I'm going to do some recordings of it before and afterwards and see if I can spot a difference in the tone. The second problem with the wah wah pedal is that there's no visual way of knowing whether it's on or off and some of the biggest modifications for a wah pedal is to add an LED so that when it goes on a light comes on and you know it's on. So I'm going to be doing that too. What will you need for these modifications you ask? Well you'll need your wah pedal obviously. You will need one of these. This is a triple pole double throw switch. It's got nine connections on the bottom. You'll be replacing the normal switch that's on the wah pedal with this. You'll need an LED and the resistor to go with it. You'll need some more wire because you're going to need to run some new connections inside the wah pedal. Soldering iron because uh, you're going to be soldering things together and desoldering them and whatnot. So you need that along with your uh, wire strippers, wire clippers, all that stuff. So these will be needed. The other things are maybe screwdriver and uh, what's this, a 7 16th socket. I've got my work desk here and I've got my crybaby wah pedal. So first thing we have to do is get the bottom off of there so we can see what's happening inside. I've got my screwdriver and there's a screw inside each of these rubberized feet and they should just come right off. So we take the bottom off and keep it in a safe place. So now we're inside the wah pedal. Now that is the old switch that we are going to replace with our new switch. There's currently one, two, three, four wires attached to it. There's this green one, there's a purple one in here and there's two blue ones connected together behind this green one. So the first job we've got to do is get these wires off here and for simplicity's sake I'm just going to clip them. That's all our wires clipped, so we're going to have to remove this switch. So to get this switch out we need to go in with a spanner, I've got an adjustable size spanner here, and I'm going to go and take that out. So there's the old switch removed, and I'll keep this in a safe place in case I ever need to use it for anything. Now it's time to mount in the new switch in its place, and this should just be straight through here. And the one thing we've got to make sure is that we've got this at the same height as it was before. Uh, so I think I might need to remove my washer. So a new switch is now in place. Before I start soldering any wires to it, I need to take this circuit board off because there are some modifications to the board we need to make in order for this to work. So the first thing to do is to use the sockets to take out the input and outputs. So I've got my 7 16th socket and that should fit in here. I'll take these off. So the circuit board has been held on by a screw here just behind this capacitor. So just take that off. And one last thing, these cables are being held on here by a little container clip and that all that needs to do is pull it out. There we go. And the whole circuit board can come away. So what modifications need to be made to this circuit board? Well, for the true bypass to work, this capacitor here, we need to make a connection between here and the switch. To do this, I'll just turn the board over. This capacitor is connected from here to this solder point here by a piece of uh, track. So to make this connection, we need to sever the point between here and here. Just where this blue line is where I've drawn. There's a piece of track underneath, like all these dark green tracks you can see lying about. Um, and we need to make sure that that's not there anymore. We need to break that connection and then make a new one between here and the switch. So we're just going to take a sharp object, any sharp object to do, 
and score away until we're through that track, just making sure that we're not going through any of the rest of the tracks on the board. Uh, otherwise we'd have to re-solder them as well. So I'm just going to take a knife and see if that will get through this point. Now I'm through that point now with the knife. Uh, you can tell when you're through because you'll stop seeing silvery metal and you'll start seeing the white resin of the actual PCB itself. So that's that connection broken. So what we need to do now is desolder this solder connection just below where we've made the break. This is linked to the top of this small capacitor here. And that's where we need to reattach a new piece of wire to go at the switch. What I usually find works quite well for desoldering components is if you get the knife. And you can usually get the knife underneath the metal leg of the component like that. You can use it as a lever like that. Why don't you take the soldering iron and desolder the point you need to desolder? There we go. And you heard it just click out of its hole. You can see that it's just popped out there. So we've got a clear run and getting a new wire attached to that. So I've cut myself a length of wire, which should be long enough to take from the circuit board to the switch. I've stripped each end. I'll tin that and attach it to the places needed. So obviously one of these places is the end of the capacitor we've just pulled up here and the other will be on the switch. And I'll wire the whole switch up at the end and you'll be able to see what's going on there. So I've put that wire underneath the circuit board for the moment to keep it out of the way. Uh, but there's two more places we need to modify on this circuit board before we can wire up to the switch. And that happens over this side. Just underneath the power connector here we have a diode and a resistor. Now we need to run a wire from the top of each of these and those will go to the LED. So I've cut myself two new lengths of wire, a red one and a white one, and I'm going to connect the red one to the resistor and the white one to the diode. So that's me got the red wire connected to where the resistor is and the white wire connected to where the diode is. Diode, resistor, white wire, red wire. And I've also got this white wire coming from the capacitor here. And I've tucked it around the back. So that's three wires that I can run up to the switch now. One thing I need before I can connect my LED is a resistor. Now if you don't put the correct value of resistor next to an LED, then it can burn the LED out. And if your resistor value is too high, then it can often stop the LED from burning as brightly as it should. So, this is just a 5mm red LED. The wah pedal is running 9 volts. So anything above about 500 ohms should do the trick. Now, where I get my resistors from is stuff like this. This is an old radio uh, circuit board, which I managed to salvage. And essentially it's got a lot of components on it, so I get a lot of capacitors and resistors from these. Now I can see on this board that there is quite a few 1K resistors. And 1K is double 500. So we're going to try one of those out and uh, just see how brightly that LED actually burns. So each resistor here has different colour bands, you can see them here. Uh, and different colours depend on what the value of the resistor is. If you don't know how to do this, then you can download apps to do this. I've got this app, uh, ElectroDroid, and it's got a resistor colour code here. It's all interactive. So if I say, right, brown, black, red, that gives me a 1K resistor. So if I'm looking for a 1K, I need to find a one, uh, one that goes brown, black, red. The last band is usually gold and it's just about how accurate uh, the resistance is. So that's plus or minus 5%, which is pretty good. So there you go, that's a brown, black, red 1K resistor pulled off that board. Now LED stands for light emitting diode. And diodes are types of components which only let current run one directionally through them. If you try to make the current run the wrong way, you could break them. LEDs are very prone to that. So, they do have 
one leg that's long and one leg that's short. And that is to let you know which side is which. The short side, that one there, I've just bent out, is the cathode, that's the negative end. This side is the anode, which is the positive end. The other way you can tell is they've got a little flat spot. don't know if you can really see it here, but there's a little flat spot in the plastic just there. And that lets you know that that's a negative end, just in case these uh, long legs have been snipped for any reason. So I've snipped a little bit off that cathode there, and we're going to connect the resistor to the cathode. Now we have the resistor connected to the cathode of the LED. Now if you remember the red wire that I put on the circuit board a minute ago, that red wire is going to connect to the other leg, the anode. So there we've got the red wire to the anode and the resistor to the cathode. So I'm going to draw a wiring diagram out here. This is our triple pole double throw switch. Uh, make sure all the contacts are horizontal and our printed circuit board there with the three components that we're going to connect wires to. Our first wire is going to go onto the switch. The green wire is going to be the top left corner there and it's going to jump to, from there to the bottom middle. The purple wire is going to be the middle of the left hand side and the two blue wires to the bottom on the left hand side. The capacitor that we pulled out earlier is going to connect to the middle pin. Uh, the resistor on the LED is going to connect to the middle right pin there. And I get my colours mixed up here, so technically that'll be the white wire going to the diode to the bottom right, and the red wire we connected to the LED earlier going to the resistor. So that's me get everything wired up inside there, onto the switch. I just need to find a place to put this LED, so it means I'm going to have to drill a hole somewhere in the chassis to make room for it. I'm thinking maybe putting it somewhere along this top bit here, because there's just a little bit sticking out and that will give me a light from the on top, which will look better than a light from on the side. I'm going to kick things off with a hand drill and see if I can get through it with that. That's me finally drilled all the way through, and I've pushed the LED into place. You can see from the top there, that's where it sits. So, I also managed to scrape a little bit of the front when I was doing it, but it doesn't matter. Wah, wah, wah. Right, so there's a little LED light on there. Now to plug it in to make sure it all works. Here's the modified wah pedal on the pedal board. So it's plugging through some of the other pedals and going into my Marshall valve state. So I've got it in clean channel at the moment. We'll show you what this wah sounds like. Wow, 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 wow,